Here's a continuation of the fuselage showing the cockpit areas. I've just put in these side pieces to help support the side of the bodywork. And what I'm going to do is cut the curved bit in a shape like this and fit that over the curved area like so and do a similar thing on the front and then what I'll do is I'll cut a, a small section to actually fit here and I'll do that after I've fitted all the curved sections and that should ensure that I have a really nice fit between the sections just think this is an easier way of doing it rather than fitting the big pieces over and then having to cut it afterwards and it's going to be quite difficult to get a nice cut doing it that way you can see that I've put the curved decking across the front of both cockpits I've sanded the front here and uh, test fitted the nose cone to make sure that fits okay. I just put in a little more reinforcement on the inside of these corners and you can see that the front former has got uh, reinforcement on the back of it as well for the mounting of the motor and also the battery tray and the battery will be coming back into this compartment. So progressing well <coughs> Just have the challenge of the rear decking now, which is uh, <coughs> quite easy up at the front, but it's quite tight curvature at the back. Okay, you can see the uh, side of the fuselage here. I've cut it a section to go there and on the other side. So I've just got these back two to do. On the front, uh, we've glued in this piece here and the little blocks that the uh, nose cone was screw into and on the underside we've got the uh, two pieces here that have been glued in place now on the back we have the rear decking here now it's quite a sharp bend at the tail end of this decking and it's, it's quite difficult to pull it over even when it's uh, dampened or steamed so what I've done is I've glued it along this edge here so that it's fixed there and it's in the right place and then what I'm going to do is, is probably uh, apply some steam so that I can bend this over and glue it in place over the top of the formers and on the edge of the fuselage on the other side there. So I'll show you how that looks when I've done that. And I don't mind the fact that there's going to be seams down here that can be uh, seen through the covering because uh, that's where their, their doors fitted anyway. And then the back piece which I glued on one side first and then folded it over that's worked fine. So we've got the uh, piece here that's been glued on and underneath we have a piece here which has been a bit glued in place. And now the front, I've had to redo the front because when I um, got to the stage of trying it for size, my box that I made earlier was actually pushing the motor too far forward. Uh, it's not too far out, only about uh, five millimetres, but obviously that's too far. And what I've decided to do instead is to use this um, nuts and bolts method which means that I can easily adjust it in and out and I can put uh, down thrust or side thrust or anything else. So to finish the front off all I have to do is to fix this in place, the battery box and then um, that'll be good to go. As far as the nose cone is concerned all I've done so far is I just drilled the hole in the front there 
so I just drilled a, a pilot hole and then used a Dremel to actually get it out to the right size and that all fits fine. Now I guess you're wondering how I'm going to get the battery in and out and what I'm going to do is make a hatch on the side of the nose cone here so I'll follow the line of where there is an opening hatch here and down here and then across very close to the bottom I'm not going to take it all the way to the back in the interest of maintaining the shape of the nose cone so the line will probably come down here and over to here and then I'll have it hinged at the top and some form of catch at the bottom and then hopefully when that's in place I should be able to uh, get the battery in through the nose and into the hole there.